Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our weekly Wednesday webinar. Uh, hopefully you can see uh, our screen. We have a PowerPoint uh, up on the screen sharing right now. Uh, welcome, we're here every Wednesday morning, uh, 10 a.m. here to share some tips, resources, um, advice on how to best utilize uh, Sage construction software. Uh, if you aren't familiar with TAG, we are an authorized business partner with controller level accountants, IT professionals, all maintaining Sage certifications to assist you in workflow design, training, data migration, anything to really uh, make you successful with this technology. Today's topic is Sage paperless construction, and we have Olivia Romer, who is a longtime Sage certified consultant uh, working with both Sage 300 CRE and Sage 100 contractor. She brings to the table um, over uh, 15 years experience. Again, an, another uh, controller level accountant. So I will go ahead and hand it off to her. Uh, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, you are uh, muted in this uh, webinar, but you have the capability to ask questions via the chat box. You are also welcome to raise your hand at the end of the meeting. We can unmute your microphone and then you can um, actually speak to us and, and ask any questions that you have. So at this time, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Olivia who will get started with our presentation. Thank you, Leilani. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, so today, like Leilani said, we're going to go through uh, Sage paperless construction. Um, specifically, I'm going to show it with Sage 100 contractor. Um, however, it but works both with Sage 100 contractor and Sage 300 construction and real estate. Um, however, in this presentation, I'm going to show it directly with Sage 100 contractor. Um, okay, just a couple of things. So there's different versions of Sage Paperless out there, and uh, each version adds a few different uh, features and functionality than the others. Um, so right now they offer three packages of Sage Paperless. Uh, Sage Paperless Basic, AP Flow Basic. Uh, currently AP Flow Basic is only available to Sage 300 construction and real estate AP Flow module users. Um, then we have AP Flow Standard and the Premium Construction, Paperless Premium Construction Suite. Okay, and um, Basically, uh, they all have the basic AP flow um, functionality. So you can route invoices, approve invoices. Um, you can uh, view documents that are AP related. Um, and then additional functionality gets added on with each um, upgrade that you make. So standard AP flow adds uh, credit card imports, you can have proxy users, you can accrue AP invoices that haven't been approved yet, you can add um, vendors on the fly and do some customizations to the display, and then types of documents, not just AP documents, but any type of documents, they can all have routing and approval workflows attached to them. Um, you can create your own custom documents and custom backfills, um, as well as um, plugins between the uh, Microsoft Office products. Okay. So I am going to uh, now show you the product itself. Okay, uh, so this is Sage Paperless. Uh, today I'm gonna be showing the full construction, the premium construction suite, but um, a lot of the information that in, is in regards to accounts payable is gonna flow with, e is going to work with either AP Flow Basic or AP Flow Standard. Okay, so right now I am logged in as Rose and Rose is our accounts payable coordinator and she gets all the invoices and imports or 
inputs the information into Sage Paperless. So here I am as Rose. I've got uh, two invoices here. So I'm just going to come and drag this document. It's a PDF document. And as you can see, as I drag this over, the window changes. So I can open up the file. I can put this file into a batch that I can create. I can index this file, uh, which I'll get to in a second. I can route this file around. I can push it to a queue. If it's multiple pages within a PDF and I want to break them out into separate documents, I can use this to split that file. I can insert this document into another document or I can just open it up into the window. So in this example, I'm going to push this invoice into a queue. And I'm going to put it into the public AP queue because I'm the AP coordinator. And I'm going to grab this second one and I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so uh, as the AP coordinator, I'm going to enter in some invoices. Now you can see here on the right hand side, these are all the invoices that are inside the AP queue. Okay. So now I'm going to start entering some of these invoices uh, into Sage Paperless. So here's my document here. I'm going to make this window a little bit bigger. Here's my document here. I have a lot of uh, tools available for me. So as you can see down below, I have all these annotation tools that I can use. I can put sticky notes on here, stamps. Uh, I can highlight certain things. I can add text. I can use boxes or lines. Um, I can write things and redact uh, items on a document. So you have a lot of availability there with what you want to add to a document, as well as uh, how you want to view a document, uh, whether you want it centered on a page um, or the page view. Also from this screen, I can email this to another individual. It could be internal or external user, and I could print this document as well. So right now, I'm going to enter this new invoice. And as you can see here, another screen popped up. This is your invoice entry screen. And you'll notice it has some of the same fields that you see within uh, accounts payable, uh, within the accounts payable module. And this is linked to your Sage accounting software. So when I click on here, I can see all of my vendors in here. Okay, as well as jobs and cost codes, etc. So I am going to uh, start entering this invoice. So this is for, whoops, this is for banks, cabinets. And um, I'm just going to start entering in the uh, invoice information. So this is for cabinets. And uh, it looks like this is for job, um, Main Street Post Office. And so as an AP coordinator, I can enter in as much information as I know or as little. So let's say maybe all I know is this basic information, who the vendor is, the invoice number, the invoice date, and the amount of the invoice. That's fine because based on routing rules that you can set up, I can have this go to um, a purchasing agent or a project manager or superintendent to, to then code this invoice within the software. Um, in this particular example, I know what this is for. This actually goes to a subcontract agreement. So when I come in here, I can actually look for this subcontract. So I know that it goes to this subcontract here and now I can see the various lines of this subcontract. So um, it's probably a little small, but as you can see, these kind of line up with my different line items on my subcontract agreement. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter how much they're billing me for. It pulls in the job cost code uh, category and GL account information in here for me. Uh, so now all I need to do is put in how much they're billing me for. So in this case, they're billing me for $54.30 on this particular line item. And then, um, this is nine two two. And then on this line item for the lobby cabinetry, they are billing me $13.062.50. 
Okay. So now I've entered this information for this particular invoice. Now I can hit this route button and what this will do is this is going to route this around for approval. So as you can see here, based on the information that I entered, it's going to uh, route this to, for approval uh, to Jose. And then after Jose approves it, then it's gonna go to John for approval. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit route. And now I can enter in my next invoice. So now I'm just going to enter in a, um, oops. What happened here? Uh-oh, something is stuck here. What happened? Uh-oh. Sorry, everyone, please hold for a second. Okay, my apologies. Um, hopefully everyone can see my screen again. Yep, I think we're, we're back. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I have a um, invoice that is not job related and I can enter in that information here as well. Um, so again, this is for sun cleaning. And I'm just gonna enter in the basic information again on this invoice. If I can spell today. <laughs> okay, because this isn't going to a job or a purchase order or subcontract agreement or a piece of equipment, I can just put it here to an expense. So in this case, this is going to go to janitorial for the full amount. And then again, I hit route. And now it's going to route this document. Now this document is going to go to a different person. Uh, it's gonna to go to Olivia for approval. So I can go ahead and route this document. Okay. So now, I, um, now I've entered all my invoices as rows. So now I'm going to change uh, to the role of an approver, okay? So now I'm gonna log into the software as Jose, and Jose is our purchasing agent. So he reviews all the documents that are related to subcontracts and purchase orders. So I'm going to review those real quick. Did I open this? Okay. Okay, so as you can see um, in Jose's screen, he can see that he has three items that are pending uh, review for him. So when he comes into this screen here, he can see the three documents that he's supposed to approve um, and the actual documents themselves on the left-hand side here, as well as all the detail below. So what was how this invoice was coded and so on and so forth. Also in, in here, I can see uh, additional information. So I can see how much has been coded to date on this particular commitment, in this case, the subcontract agreement. I can also see what the budget looks like as well, okay? 
So as you can see in this particular example, I'm over budget on this particular line item or this cost code. Okay, as I review the document, if I want to look at additional information, I can. Maybe I want to look at the vendor history because maybe I feel like they have another invoice that where they billed us for this exact same uh, stuff. So I can take a look at that information. You can also look at any related documents. So um, if they had a subcontract agreement or a purchase order that was scanned inside the software, I could also see all that information as well. Okay. So uh, once I've reviewed the document and I feel that everything is correct, then I can just hit the approve button and I can go on to my next item. It still provides any of the warnings that you would normally get within your Sage software. As you can see, this is telling me I'm over budget on this cost code and it would exceed it um, on the category as well. So I'm going to waive this because I know it's because we haven't entered in a change order yet. And now that invoice is approved and I can go on to the next invoice and so on and so forth. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to log in as the project manager, John, because he has some additional approval capabilities that Jose does not. Oops. Okay, so on John's screen, you can see he has two items pending his approval and he has three items in his inbox. So inside his inbox, he has different types of documents that he can approve. In this example, he has a purchase order he needs to review and approve, um, another purchase order, and he also has a subcontract change order that was sent to him for approval as well. Okay, so once he reviews these documents, he can just hit approve and then those show that John approved these documents, that they're correct, and now they can be sent out to whoever should receive them, whether it's a sub or um, a customer or a supplier, um, however that, um, however, whoever needs to receive those documents. So again, I'm looking at this purchase order. Yep, this purchase order is correct. I'm gonna go ahead and approve this document. Now this feature and functionality is only available with the premium construction version of the software. Uh, only AP documents are available with AP Flow Basic and AP Flow Standard. So this feature right here is only with the construction premium suite. Okay. So now I also have invoices to approve as well. And again, you can see the same type of um, screen that Jose had. So in this particular example, this was an invoice that Jose approved prior to me. So I can see it here. It was approved by Jose on this day at this time. If Jose wrote any notes, those would be added here as well. Um, and he waived the fact that this was going over budget because um, we have uh, change orders that haven't been entered yet. So I can review this again. If I needed to change anything, I would have the capability to do so if it was went to a wrong subcontract agreement or if the cost code or job was incorrect. I have the ability to change that information in this screen. Okay. In this case, this document looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and approve that document. And yes, I know it's over budget, but that's okay. And I'm going to go ahead and waive that. Okay, so now that document is approved and I can go to my next document. You have the ability to approve documents, to reject documents, and to place them on hold, as well as reroute the documents as well. So what I recommend with, to customers is rather than rejecting them, I would place them on hold if there's an issue. If you reject an invoice, then if it had multiple approval tiers, then it would have to start that whole approval process all the way over from the beginning. 
Um, if you place it on hold, you can get whatever issue resolved and then approve it at a later time. When documents are placed on hold, they are not submitted into um, your accounting software for payment. So they will not be paid if they're in a um, status of hold, okay? Only approved invoices can be submitted for payment. Okay, another nice feature um, with Sage Paperless is the ability to search for documents. Uh, so here I have these documents and I can put in certain search criteria that I might need to find the specific documents that I'm looking for. So in this particular example, I want to um, find any documents that are related to this particular job. So now it's showing me all the documents that are in the software. And as you can see, as I hover my uh, icon, my mouse over, I can see a preview of what that document is. So in this example, I've got a subcontract agreement for write, some invoices, and some purchase order information on this particular job. Again, I can double click on it. I can view that document. I can print it email it, add annotations, et cetera, um, with that uh, search utility. I can also do that functionality here. I can email it, I can print, um, I can save it to a file, so it saves it to my computer as a PDF, or uh, if I wanted to take all this information and save it to a DVD, I could do that as well. I have that capability. All right, so now I'm gonna log on as the administrator, just so you can see some of the features and functionality that you have available. All right, so, um, as an admin, you can see you have a lot of functions that you have available to you. So in here, I can set up AP accruals. So any invoices that have not been approved um, at the end of the month, I can accrue those automatically. So it'll automatically do a GL and job cost entry to my accounting software for those unapproved invoices that automatically reverse out the next month. So that way I can still capture those costs without actually approving those invoices. So that's a nice feature. Um, I also can create credit card import templates. Um, so that way I can download the statements from my credit card company, whether it be American Express or Chase or whoever your credit card's from, and pull all those receipts together on those documents. Um, this is also where I can set up invoice routing rules. So in this particular example, I have three rules set up. One, if an invoice is over $100,000, it needs to go to a Dean, who is our CFO. If it's an admin expense, then it just goes to Olivia for approval. And if it's a job cost invoice, with a subcontract, then it needs to go to Jose for approval first, and then it goes to John. Now you can have as many different types of rules as you want to set up. You're really not limited to how many that you can have, and they can get as easy or as complicated and detailed as you would like. You can also set up proxy users. So as an example, let's say Olivia was on vacation and what I want to do is I want to make a Dean a proxy user for Olivia so he can view all the invoices that are in her queue for approval um, and he can approve those as well. And once it's approved, it will say that Dean approved these on behalf of Olivia. So that's a nice feature when people are on vacation or they're out of the office and things need to be approved to be able to have those proxy users do that.
Okay. In the uh, doc routing, similar to the AP routing, um, you can create routing rules for other types of documents. So whether it be change orders, purchase orders, daily field reports, um, plans, any type of document that you want to, you can put in workflows that when certain criteria is met, it automatically um, routes these documents around to various individuals for approval or maybe just to be aware of that document. Um, whatever types of information you want. And then again, you also have proxy users as well for the other types of documents. And you can create routing groups. So maybe certain things go to uh, anyone who's part of the routing group of project manager or superintendent or purchasing agent, things of that nature. Okay. The other nice piece about Sage Paperless is that it's fully integrated into your accounting software. So real quick, I'm gonna pull up this subcontract agreement. Whoops, wrong one. Uh, 922, okay. Um, all throughout the software, whether it be Sage 100 Contractor or Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate, you'll see these paper clips. And the paper clips are where you can attach documents. With Sage Paperless, once a document is um, scanned and created inside Paperless, it automatically sends that information to your accounting software. So you'll notice in this example, this paper clip has a piece of paper in it. That means there is a document available for me to view. So as you can see, I've got the subcontract document. So when I double click on this, um, it's gonna show me the actual document itself. So in this case, I can see the signed document here, the signed subcontract agreement. And I can also see any related documents to this. So in this particular example, I have the signed subcontract. I also have a change order that's been issued against this subcontract. And I also have the AP invoice that is also related to the subcontract document. So I can see all of these right from my um, accounting software without having to go and search for it within Sage Paperless. So that's all throughout the software, which is a nice feature, especially when you're reviewing things. Um, maybe you're running a job cost report, you're drilling down to it to see what something is, then you can actually view the document. It makes it a nice feature um, for researching items or finding items, um, having that capability to be paperless. It saves a lot of time and it makes things very convenient for users as well. And it eliminates that, um, that storage cabinet from your office. So saving you some office space as well. So that is some of the basic features and functionality that are available to you within Sage Paperless Construction. Um, we will go ahead and open it up to questions if anyone has any. Again, everyone feel free to use the Q&A &A area of Zoom or the chat box as well, or there is a uh, raise hand function and then we can unmute your microphone if it's a, a little bit more of a complex question. This presentation is also uh, being recorded, so we will be sure and send a link out to this recording in case you'd like to share this with anyone else on your team. Thank you guys all for joining us this morning. We hope that it was helpful to you. And of course, if you have 
other um, areas that you would like to see a little bit more in detail, feel free to email me. Uh, we're happy to do a, a further demonstration. So I don't see any questions uh, coming through. I uh, hope everyone have has a, a great week this week. Again, any other questions or um, demo requests, feel free to email or call us um, at the TAG office. Thanks so much, Olivia. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.